right. Hi, everybody. I'm Aramis. I'm going to be talking today about the uh, power of OpenAPI, the new OpenAPI tooling um, project area. So before we start, a little bit about me. Uh, my first PR to the project was a year and a half ago in 2022. Um, I panicked, closed it, and reopened an adjusted PR about three days later. Uh, I've been the maintainer for the OpenAPI tooling space for the last uh, nine months, I think, um, and working in here for about a year and three months. Um, and I also work at DoorDash currently. So what does OpenAPI tooling mean? When I say OpenAPI, when I say OpenAPI tooling, like, what does that actually uh, refer to? So talk about OpenAPI. OpenAPI is a, a language agnostic schema for defining uh, API communication, so server to server, server to client. Um, and the tooling is infrastructure around a specific concept to improve the developer experience or the user experience uh, when using that concept. So putting that together, we have OpenAPI tooling, which is the infrastructure around writing OpenAPI specs um, and improving the plugin developer experience for your backstage uh, developers. So what does that actually, you know, in practice mean? Uh, so Specifically, we're looking at typing your API, testing your API, and calling your API. Uh, there might be a theme here. Um, and so, yeah, what is the experience like today? So you might be using Zod. If you're lucky, you're going to be using express typed responses. Um, you might have a handwritten client. And you might also have shared types between server and client. Um, a lot of areas for improvement, so how can we actually improve that. Uh, step one is write an open API spec. Um, and step two is profit. So we have automatic request validation, request and response types, uh, auto-generated client, and API fuzzing and testing. Um, we can do a quick demo of like, what that actually looks like in practice. Um, so here I've done a very simple say hello endpoint uh, for the existing catalog API. Uh, it takes in a name and a from, um, of which the name is required and the from is optional. And it returns a sort of JSON message with just a message property. Um, and so I can actually run the command to generate the files here um, with this. Let me zoom in a little bit. So what we're doing here basically is uh, running generate, and we're passing in a server. Um, flag as well as a client package flag. If I press enter here, it'll generate the code um, to actually hook in to your uh, open API spec that you've written, for this case, the catalog backend, but this would be for any plugin backend. Um, yeah, so this is the, the server generated code. Um, this is very similar to the YAML, it's mostly just copy pasted and transformed to JSON. And we're using this generally for the uh, the typing experience. So I'll show in a second here, but the, the idea here is we actually want to give you a typed express router that has specific to endpoints the like input output data um, as well as validation on top of that. And we also get a client that's auto generated, um, which has a say hello endpoint, takes in the request body, and returns this typed response. I can click into each of these types. Um, we can see there's a that message here, um, as well as the say hello request, which has the name and from. Um, and we can see this, this whole request, uh, the client request actually uses the discovery API under the surface um, and sends like all of the, uh, the fetch requests that we would expect. So moving on to the actual the router experience, um, I've pre-written this. I can go through and actually show the, the typed experience as I do this, though. So, as I'm typing, I get IntelliSense hints for which endpoints currently exist in the catalog. Um, and this is per uh, HTTP method. So I'm going to click in the say hello. I also get IntelliSense for body parameters, query parameters, um, headers, things like that. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the from the name here and then the from down below. As I said before, from is optional. So um, this from is required, and we want to you know, give the default of backstage. Um, and then hello service dot say hello will return that message body that we expect. So if I were to save this and then run a couple of requests, um, we can see message 
hello backstage con from OpenAPI tooling, as well as the uh, optional hello backstage con from backstage, um, as well as the uh, request validation I was talking about earlier. So if there's no body, like the name is missing, um, we'll automatically catch that here, no Zod schema required. Um, it's pretty nice. And then the other piece here is the testing tie-in. So what we're doing under the surface is um, some proxying to basically validate your unit tests against your open API spec, keep the two of them um, in sync. So I have two tests here. One of them is a pretty simple, just make sure the service value matches the service output. Um, and the other one is uh, what I would say is like a sort of lazily written test. So I have a message one is any. Um, you might see this for like object types or more complex types that doesn't necessarily match the output value, but it's something that gets the types to fix and that the test passes in jest. Um, so if I go ahead and run this, um, we'll see that the uh, tests actually run through and pass, um, which is what we'd expect for the jest side. However, we want to make sure that the like API is actually being tracked as well. So there's a separate command for that, which is the uh, open API uh, test command. So repo schema open API test and then the plugin name. This will run that proxy I was talking about. So it checks your uh, unit test against the proxy to make sure that the values that you're sending um, actually match your spec. So you can see here there's an error message. Um, message does not match type string received one which is the, uh, the value we're expecting here. Um, all right, back to the slides. So quick shout out to the like, actual tools we're using under the surface here. So Optic is the one doing the proxying. Um, there's also a really cool feature that they have around breaking changes. So there's a PR currently out for that that would give you a summary on PRs of um, the actual changes that happened and any breaking changes for your API that might have happened there. So this, in this case, there was a uh, breaking change for making a request property required. Uh, back to the slides. OK. So the other company and tool that we're using is called Schema Thesis. This is, uh, uses API fuzzing um, to use your open API spec and actually give you some fuzzing tests on top of that um, to give you like full coverage of your API. Um, no demo for that, but there's a PR out for that currently, so it's in progress. So I'm sold. How do I get started? Um, so the first, this is a QR code for the tutorial on how to uh, like add your plugins and integrate your plugins with the current Open API tooling, um, as well as a second QR code for the uh, meta issue for um, the whole project area. Cool. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. Any questions for Aramis? All right. So, oh, here's one. Sorry. Coming your way. No need to run. <laughs> Question one escaped my mind. Um, after seeing this open API, and basically what I love about is how automatically it grabs all the, all the APIs themselves and shows them in the code, how much easier with it it's actually to build upon the custom actions? Like I'm providing some kind of schema and after seeing you running some command, it already generated some certain class. So is it really then becomes even easier to accompany some custom actions that use various API calls? Uh, not currently. So the, the basic use case that I'm targeting right now is really that uh, client to server function. Um, you could write those each as like wrapper clients. So the, the current, like the catalog client, for example, is a wrapper client on top of the um, generated client to give you more flexibility on like input output types um, as well as like additional calls and things like that. 